right it's 3.50 on the 11th of August 31 and a half degrees scorching um, and I'm off down to Purbex again and uh, back to a mark I went I think back in um, June I think so um, yeah give it a go high tides about half past eight this evening which is nice it'll be daylight and then just as it gets dark hopefully we're coming to bite time on the ebb right see you down there right well we're here two hours and 20 minutes that's not bad mm. traffic wise yeah it's not bad so time to uh, unload the car and uh, load myself up and then uh, start the uh, 35 40 minute walk usual route through Acton village out to Priest Way and then you take the next right across the field down to the coast path I have to say when I left home over two hours ago it was 34 degrees and now it's a comfortable 26 with a coastal breeze so uh, better than 34 This time I've actually um, packed things a little bit differently. So I've actually got my, well, my water bottles are inside the rucksack instead of hanging on the outside. And I've got both my rods inside one, one of these big century rod bags. Um, they all fitted in there nicely. So what I found is when I had the bare rods strapped up to the rod stand, um, they were exposed to a bit of scratching from the rod stand. So um, Worked, worked them out so they fitted neatly into one rod bag so it stops the rod snap from scratching them when they're all bound together with the straps yeah there you go you can see that right here we are here's the old valley again we, when we were here two months ago we had a herd of deer here and it was green green now it's pretty dry like a tinder box Right, we're here, and that took um, 25, yeah, about 40 minutes to actually get down the ledger from the car. It's probably about 45 minutes to get back to the car because it's all uphill. Let's get set up. As you see, here's the mess. Everything's all chucked everywhere, ready to go. And the baits we're gonna be using this evening. Right, I have got one frozen mackerel and two packs of pink squid, one pack of sand eel. And we're gonna, I'm gonna show you how, uh, in a bit, how we mount that onto the spinning rig. Um, the pink squid, yes. So you get a pack of, um, a, new pa a new pack of squid, use it you try and keep you, you open it up you take out three or four put them on a cutting board um, and the rest you wrap up tight put back into your cool bag uh, bait bag whatever to try and keep them frozen um, over a matter of hours it will start to defrost and what happens is of course the bacteria 
that uh, breaks down the flesh when it's rotting starts to do its thing as it defrosts. Um, but if you manage to keep it cool enough, so there's ice crystals and it feels cold, that by the time you get home it still feels cold to the touch and almost a little bit of ice there in places, then you can refreeze it. And what it does is where the bacteria starts to break down the flesh, it creates a stronger scent. And some people, well I've tried it and it, it works, you know. Um, and then we call it pink squid because it's starting to change colour as it's effectively starting to rot. Um, yeah, so uh, as you see there, pink. Now if you can see some in there as well. Yeah, so there we go. But you don't want to refreeze it a second time. You can refreeze it the first time, but a second time I think it, it goes off then. So the first thing to do is a little bit of feathering, whilst we've still got the light. And then I'll do a bit of spinning, see if there's any pollock around just before it gets dark. There we go. So what you've got coming from the main line, coming down, you have a lead on about a 12 inch link of 30 pound, that's a 3 ounce lead going to a swivel, that runs up and down the main line, then you have a bead just there, and then you have your second swivel, the swivels don't have to be massive swivels for this, 50 pound, 45, 50 pound swivels, then you come through to 18 pound hook length, which is, you know, you've got to have it reasonably thin, anything heavier, and it's difficult to tie them to actually get the, to mount the sand deal. So, yeah, and that comes through to a 3 0. And the reason for that is because of the size of the mouth on Pollock, even small ones. So, 
you've got about a it's about a five foot length okay I'll show you how to put how we're going to put the eel on now I'll tell you what bare knees on this rock very nice so we're going <coughs> to cough have copper guts up for a start then we'll open up a packet of sand deal out there one sand deal there's the hook so There's the eye of the sand eel, swimming that way. Hook goes through that eye. And you push him around. And then you can pull the, the hook, which is about an inch, probably the length of the shank of the hook, out through the side of the body, like so. Pull the eye of the hook into the eye of the sand eel, like so. Now, this is the important bit. This is why you have to use a fairly light hook length of about 15 to 18 pounds. You need to open up the jaws, and then the jaw bones is where you tie a couple of half hitches. So, like that, twist it around and over. Oh, got, you've got to try to use the other fingers to pull the knot tight. That's it. Once, don't worry about the thing spinning around. And a second time, like so. It's a bit tricky, but you use these other things to try and pull that line down, and then you can pull it all tight by holding the nose of the sand eel. And what you get, you get that. Now, I mean, it's a bit vicious, I must admit. I mean, I'd like perhaps to have that hook going down like that, but it's not a problem because they can hit the side of that sand eel, a pollock will come in, whack straight over that block, over that point there we go so it's actually come out of the side yeah funny enough i never actually paid attention to that in the past i've always just whacked them on there and the hook's been any old angle so that's interesting yeah probably sometimes one reason why i've, I've missed some takes but we'll see
right, so spinning didn't produce anything, so I'm going on to a short pulley panel, uh, size size ones, I think. Um, and um, now these are a tiny bit rusty, but they've still got points. What I can do with this stone, and I do this a lot these days, I always just touch up the points. And the same on this one. Make sure I always make sure the stone's wet. But, you know, I don't know what people feel about that, but I think in this sharpness stone, like this one here. wet. You always run from the bend to the point. Bend to the point. You don't go the other way like that because otherwise you're, you're blunt all your hard all your work you've done, been doing. I mean they're big hooks and I don't think they're ever gonna stick it into your nail on the nail test as they say but yeah there's definitely a point there definitely a point right so now it's time to bait up a bit of mackerel so from the flesh side in and then out through the skin and then back through the skin out through the flesh one and then you've got squid so I take the wide end of the of the uh, cut there and I can just put it through once like that turn it around hang them together like that get your cotton and, and we're back to what I always do when we go on the bottom fish <laughs> with the squid and mackerel like that <coughs> have a cough and there we are yeah it's not too downed up like that so you get that lovely little thing like that with a bit of mackerel on the back there and down comes your pulley your, your panel hook um, I think I'm going to put this like that through the and then pull because that's a 60 pound hook length that one so I've got one hook there and I've got one hook there one hook there one hook there or oh, one hook Charlie I just turn it a bit because it's got to go on the bait clip slide it up a little bit so there's a bit of um, separation there so it releases in the water. Right, so we've got left hand rod, left hand rod out about 80, 90 yards out on the short pulley panel with mackerel squid combo cocktail. And this right hand rod is actually on a very cheap, easy to lose 
um, without any, any that you haven't got to worry about losing any expense for this rig. One swivel here, and so I've got one swivel here at the top, coming down to this was a blood loop knot, okay, which you can practice, and then it's a short length of um, the, the whole rig is about 18 or 20 pounds. Um, the blood loop then is cut to make the hook snood and the hook snood is about 10 inches with a small little chin, well a 3-0 chinu, chinu on there um, but a chinu is quite a, a short compact hook so even though it's got a wide gate um, I've got a bit of macaron squid on there and then the, the rest of it is about bloody four and a half foot to to the to the lead so um, if I lose that it, I it's not going to bother me, you know. Um, there's no shock leader to lose, and I'm going to put this just over the side. So down here is a darker patch here where it's deeper. I'm just going to drop that straight down into that hole there. Right. So I've actually finished the bait presentation. I've added some more squid on the bottom, pulled the mackerel over the eider hook, so it's pretty kind of compact now. There's no cotton on it. Um, it's literally designed for rockling and pollock and that just to grab it. There you go, so the right rod is actually the line just comes off down into the hole there. Alright, time for dinner I think. On the Scotch egg, now we're on the steak slice. Hmm. Do you know what? It's so warm here. It's now nine o'clock at night, nine o'clock in the evening. The rock I'm sitting on, so I sit on a radiator, and you can feel the heat coming out of the stone. It is, it's amazing. I'm in shorts and t shirt, and I bought some stuff in the rucksack in case I got a bit chilly, you know, but I don't think I'm going to be needing it. I hope we can get some on the bottom here. Let's hope it works. Tell you what, there's the moon. Well, I normally do a sunset, but this time I've got a moonrise. Look at that. Big red ball on the horizon, the sea. Just above the sea, just above the horizon there. It's amazing. Look at that moon now. trying to focus. You can't do it with the too close on the zoom because the, the, the movement of the water. Look at that, that's amazing. Right, it's, it's 10.25 now in the evening and um, nothing, not a bite. So I had the I've still got one in close, about 10 yards out. Um, whole squid on now. And mackerel. And just pulled in the first one that went out about nine, uh, went out probably more than 45, 40 minutes ago. 
uh, it's just one and truly snag. So you manage to get it out of the snag. I think it's just weed. Um, yeah, so now. Recast with, uh, with a whole squid. In the blue corner, we have the short pulley panel weighing it at 150 grams with a lump of mackerel and squid all tied on in a combo. And in the red corner, we have a long pulley panel. That is with a double sand deal. And there we go. Um, 20 to 11 now so we were effectively two hours after high water now when I checked the tides the tides um, were halfway going from neeps to springs on the way up to springs but half, about roughly halfway height wise um, there's a bit of wave movement now crashing on the rocks um, so there will be some tiny movement out there but it is 20 to 11 and it's been a blank so far so uh, yeah yeah blankety blank I will check with the pen so far try that sand you'll bait out there and uh, see if that uh, Oh, there they are. <laughs> There's the tips. Motionless. Right, actually got some bites on the left hand rod, look at that, proper bites, and I just cast it, it's been in two, less than a minute, taking line off the clutch it was as well, 
Look at that. Yeah, we better sort it out. snack isn't it again decent set of bites this time 10 past 11 all right let's get this out Here he is. <laughs> Not a bad time. Here he is. <laughs> Not bad. Not a bad strap. That's about four pound, four or five pound. It's nearly three foot long. So, uh, yeah, it's not bad. Actually snagged up and then um, gave a bit of slack and then it bloody came out of the snag. Well, later than what I anticipated. Quarter past one. Still 20 degrees outside. Oh, amazing. Um, yeah. So, the one strap saved the blank. Um, oh, yeah. 
knackering coming back up that hill. Knackering, but it's the way it is. Right now, anyway, once again, thanks for watching. Until next time, ciao for now.